ahead and record this though. Okay. So, um, last lecture, I had some issues with the dynamic program. That was because I was completely wrong about the sub problems or the coin sum. I don't know why. I, I, I've solved it a lot of times, but I thought, oh, yeah, I've solved it totally. I'll be able to do it. Um, and then I was like, wait, how do I explain this again? So let me go ahead and now explain it. So everybody able to follow? Everybody able to see? Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So let me let me go ahead and explain. So pretty much forget everything I was describing last time. Uh, coin sum is very is again the same kind of problem we had earlier though. This the same definition, right? Which is um, given a amount of currencies. One, two, five, ten. In this case, for our uh, currencies, right? Or and you know, we've got eight total coins here. We want to find the unique ways we can make change for n units, n being two hundred in this case. Okay. So we're going to go through three um, the three ways that I wanted to do it last time, but actually do it correctly this time. So okay. The base, the recursion for this is fair, is actually a bit straightforward, which is um, what we want to do is that basically that the, um, that the ways to make change for, um, the ways to make change for N coins, okay, and uh, using, um, sorry, the way to make change for N units using these coin, this amount of coins, right? is as follows. It is basically the, uh, or, um, oh. basically we wanna figure out, okay. Um, so the total, and I'm, I'm abstracting here for a second. The total is equal to the ways Ways using the the ways using the largest coin plus ways without using largest coin, and we can actually do this in recursion. Apparently, not to not uh, in a not too shabby manner, right? We've got but basically that's what it comes down to. We look. We are gonna look at, okay, we have, for instance, let's go ahead and take a look at um, making at the ways to make change for five coins, right? What it comes down to is we wanna make, uh, figure out uh, how many ways there are if, the, if we use the five piece and the ways without, um, without using the five piece. Make sense? Now this is going to um, look a bit weird, but I assure you it is correct and it is going to be recurred and it and the recursion works here. Or at least according to Project Euler, it does. Okay. Now the issue we were having is that because I, is I wasn't defining it that way earlier. The way I was defining it meant basically that I was double counting a lot of combinations that I shouldn't have been counting. Um, and I wasn't essentially doing it correctly, which is why I got such a dynamically big number, um, which was absolutely wrong. So let's see. Oh, here it is. So we are going to delete all this. And instead we are going to do target is equal to 200 uh, function. So we're going to do def the ways to make change for, um, for some value. Oh. 
Let's go ahead and make sure that there's no confusion about what is what. Target. And the coins that are available. The way to make change for that, um, let's see. If, so base case here, if coins, if the length of the coins is uh, less than or equal to one, In other words, if we don't have any coins available to make change with other than the one piece, if there's just, if we only have the one piece, there is only one way to make change, right? And if we have no coins, we can't make change at all. So there's only one way to make change, which is not making any change at all. Um, total is equal to zero, while target is greater than zero or equal to zero. We are going to do the following. And again, we're just doing this plain recursion right now, um, which is um, total the total ways to make coins. We're going to say that the total number ways to make coins is equal to the total, the current number we have, plus the number of the weight number of ways we figured it out so far plus the ways to make um, um, make change. Okay, and this is gonna look a little weird if you aren't familiar with Python. Coins. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is that while we have still have um, while we're still trying to make change, we're going to try to figure out all the ways to make change without using our biggest coin. We're going to assume, in this case, like def, that when we call ways out here, what we're going to do is we're going to give it the target, and we're going to give it um, coins like this, one, two, five, 10, oh, let's see, I think it was the 25, the 50, the 100, 200, right? Those were the coins. Yeah. Oh, no, it's out. 20 for British coins, 20. So we're going to figure that out. And then we are going to also figure out the number. And then our target is going to be um, target minus. which if we run this, oh, ran actually. And calculates the correct answer. And actually does so in, you know, not terrible time. So what we're doing here is figuring out how many ways without using the coin, and then we're going to use the coin. And then try to figure out, and, and we're going to keep doing that, and then we're going to keep using the coin as much as possible until we have to go and figure out how many ways without using it. We can, you can follow the chain down with five. Um, it gets messy because there's a lot of, uh, there's plenty of recursion that goes on there. Um, but everybody see uh, see how this works, or everybody following this, Professor. What does coins colon minus? Run? Oh, right, right, right. I said it was going to look a little weird. So what this does is this this is a slice operation. Okay. So, um, so when you do a colon like that, that's a slice from beginning index to ending index. Okay, if you leave out the ending index, sorry, if you leave out the beginning index. It just assumes you're starting from zero. And if you leave out the ending index, it goes all the way to the end. When I say negative one, that's another way to write length of coins minus one. So it's a much more shorter way to say, hey, um, let's make a new, let's go ahead and chop off the last coin. Make sense? So basically, um, when when we pass this in, 
the first thing this is going to do is it's going to recursively call target 200 on this on a new list of this size. But I have, you know, 16 gigabytes of memory. And so I don't care how much uh, how much space I'm really wasting here, although it's a lot. It's a lot. And, um, you know, if I try to go up to a higher value. Oh, wait, no, that's a lower value. I try to go up to a higher value. You'll see that it just shh, it's working through it as best it can. It's struggling as much as possible. Okay, so what this does is says with um, recursively calculate the number of ways to figure this out without coins, and and then use the and then here we use the biggest coin we have to reduce the amount amount of target we have. Make sense? Now, what's going to happen? So, again, we could try to trace this out um, with trying to make change for, let's go ahead and make sure we've got a reasonable value here, five, and comment these out. I gotta love Python sometimes. And there's four ways to make change for five. So again, what we're gonna do here is if we're trying to do ways for five, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be one, two, five. It's gonna calculate the number of uh, the first sub problem it's gonna be is calculate. ways to make change for five with only ones and twos. Okay. As well, and then it's going to try and, and then let's see the code I had wrote. Okay. So we'll do this recursive call. And then we say target is equal to target to subtract the largest coin. And that will only run while it's greater than equal to zero. So that will do that and it will stop. So we now reduce to this case. We don't need to continue on here. So now this will have two calls, which is not using largest coin, ways to make change for five using the one only the one coin. And we know that this has to be one, right? There's only one way to make cha change for that. Similarly, what we're doing over here is we're making change and I'll give it a bit and I'll use this, I'll use this color because this isn't a recursive call. This is just subtraction at the moment to go to uh, three, one and two, which will give us ways or three, one and two, as well as giving us um, let's see. And that will do a recursive call to oh, sorry, and that will do another not recursive, but one of those uh, deductive calls right there to do ways. using three, sorry, using four, change the way to, the, how many ways can we make one change for one coin using a one, using a, how many change can we make change for one, for one pence using a one coin and a two coin? It's gonna be equal to ways. one and one, which as we saw earlier, this is gonna give us one. And then let's see our code said at this point to subtract this. So that's gonna terminate. And then we get into a similar vein here where we get one and 
So there's three in the one coin, and then we get one in the one coin. Make sense? So there's to four total. So that reduces us to four total ways over here. So, sir, this, now this method to reduce, like, uh, how this method is reducing the redundancy is that, so the last, uh, the biggest number, the big, biggest coin has been excluded. So we don't, we don't consider the order. We don't care about the order, like of the biggest coin first or right. the second, like small well, coin. We're going to use the biggest coin first. It just makes the math easier. Um, also, it makes it, it, it we want to use the biggest coin first. Otherwise, it's going to probably not work. I mean, we so can like test. The, I mean, I can test. I can test if it's going to work by using the um, by using the smallest coin first. Um, no, it's not going to work using the smallest coin first, which is what I was doing previously. Right, five for thirteen, and then um, if we go up to two hundred. This is essentially what was happening last time, um, where I was using the biggest coin for, no, well, some not the, not as big, but as you can see, we get a different answer, right, than what we should be getting. Using the smallest coin first um, doesn't give us the doesn't help us make the choices correctly, because we'll just continuously. Um, because we'll, we'll end up, we, I think we'll end up double counting a lot more things. Make sense? The order matters here. Yes? Oh, you're muted. Uh, I still didn't really get it, sir. Uh, what I'm saying is that if we do the, if we try, the order matters. If we try subtracting out the smallest coin first, it gives us a, a completely different and wrong answer. Yeah, I mean, I guess that part, but like, um... so what we're doing is just we're calculating the number of ways, essentially, um, that we can't that the number of ways that work with using this coin. Ah, come on. And the number of ways that that we have an error. It's not enough to have an error. I'm we're trying to get my pen working. It just come on. It says I've got a pen, but regardless, the number to count to do this calculation and the way the sub problems always are is that it is the um. It, the number of ways to make change is the number of, is equal going to be equal to the number of ways to make change using the biggest coin and the number of chain ways to make change without using the biggest coin. When we use the biggest coin, we just simply subtract it out. When we don't use the biggest coin, we remove it from the amount of coins and call it on the same amount that we're standing at. So that lets us do multiple recursive calls in this while loop. It's not just one recursive call at the top um, because that happened to be equal to the number of times we did it. Um, instead, it is this. The um, We see over here that when we, uh, sorry, after our first recursive call, it breaks down into multiple recursive calls that happen as a result of the while loop. Make sense? There's multiple recursive calls that happen in the while loop. Um, it isn't just one. It's that that's why I drew these weird colored lines because they they that's trying to I'm trying to represent the while loop running and getting us to a different answer on the same level of recursion. It gets messy, as I said, even for an answer that has only four combinations. All right, um, but. Regardless, we can do better than this. Um, and we're going to like, because again, what I showed you is that if I'm trying to figure out the best way to make change for a thousand pence, 
it's just gonna hang there forever, right? 200 is a lot. And the reason is, is because we keep getting, is that in this, um, in this, when we're doing it this way, we keep redoing the same sub problem over and over again. Specifically, we keep calculating the way to make change for um, something. Um, uh, the Project Euler document does the math and it says, hey, you wanna know how many recursive function calls you made for solving 200? You made 32,195,472 recursive function calls. That's not how deep it went. If it was, we'd get a stack overflow, but this is how many total calls you made. Because remember, some of these recursions finished before other ones. Um, and if the cal calculating the ways to make change, uh, with, uh, to make change for 10 coins, uh, sorry, 10 pence using the one coin and the two coin, That gets calculated 9,400 and times. Make sense? Because again, it's the same issue with the, Fibonacci, with the Fibonacci sequence where we keep hitting the same recursive functionality, where we keep hitting the same uh, sub problems again and again. So once so we know- one, mm -hmm. so Is this one a good design with such like uh, many recursive operations? It's, I mean, it solves the problem, but it's not good. We want to get it better so that we can actually solve a larger number. Okay, that's how we're learning dynamic programming. Yep, and before we learn, and so we're going to learn the opposite, basically what gets confused with dynamic programming, which is memoization, which I was referring to last time. Memoization. Basically, again, we're just simply going to create a array, okay? Uh, and what we're going to do is, so I'm going to be, I say array, but it's definitely going to be a table, okay? So what we're going to do is that we need to say, okay, um, ways to, um, and what we're going to, and we can either make that as a dictionary or as an array. Um, either way works. But the idea here is we're going to still use the recursive function, but we are going to go ahead and pass in our basically what's called a memo. Um, and if we don't pass one in, we'll start it by default, it being that, so we don't really need to change our function call. Okay, so what we're gonna do is that we are going to save um, our starting target is equal to, equal to target. So in other words, where we started at, because again, we're gonna be modifying this, right? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, um, let's see, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to memoize this for here, because um, I'm going to try this the way that I know that I don't know if it'll work, but then I'll do it the way that I that I do work, and that it will work, okay, which is starting target is equal to target. What we're going to do is we are going to calculate um, no, we're going to do it the way it works. We know it works. Scratch using a hash table. We're just going to use a boring array because that's going to be good. So um, memo is equal to a list. So yeah. to a list. And we'll initialize it here. If memo is equal, equal to Sorry, if memo is zero, in other words, if we don't, if we haven't created our memoization table, we are going to do so now. Um, wow. Okay, Python will apparently let you do that. <laughs> so, okay. 
And what we need to do here is we have, we're gonna create, um, let's see, we need, we're gonna basically create a lookup table, a nice good lookup table where we're gonna have um, the, hmm, we're gonna have memo, For I for I in range length of I am range target plus one. We are going to uh, row is equal to zero times. Length of length of this is going to be a bit wasteful. I'm using a bit more rate uh, rows than I need to. Sorry, a bit more columns than I have to. But it's going to be good. It's going to be better for me to do it that way because uh, then I don't have to really adjust my code. Memo dot append row. So here I'm creating a table, and what does the table look like? I create the starting target, and then what I do is. I say, hey, first off, if we, when we solve the problem over here, we're going to store the answer for it. So it doesn't have to be recalculated. Memo of this total of this starting target is, e and for this many coins, okay, that is going to be equal to our total. Make sense? We're going to sto store how many coins we have, we, uh, the amount of coins we've used. Make sense? And let's see. Zero. That should work. And then what we'll do before we start doing this loop is we'll say if memo um of the target of this starting target and this number of coins is greater than zero in other words if we have an answer uh return that answer make sense so if you've seen the answer before do it otherwise calculate it List index out of range, length coin. So let's go ahead and see what did I do wrong. Length of coin, right. Length of coin plus one. Again, I'm going to waste, I'm going to burn some memory here just to use it. There we go. I'm creating a bunch of useless rows that aren't going to be used with zero coins and stuff like that, but that's okay. Again, I, I'm, I'm planning, I, I'm going to be burning memory like crazy for this. Okay. And now, if now that the answers are cached and I can look them up again, it just does it in a blink of an eye. Make sense? Or no? What I've done is I've created a. Let's go ahead and break it down with a visual with the visual aid. So here is so here the C is the biggest C is the biggest coin. And T is my target that I'm trying to make change for, okay? And what we can see is that there's one way to make change for zero, for zero pence, no matter how many coins I have, right? Ignore the arrows for now. I'll talk about that for a second. We also have, and then with one coin, it doesn't matter how many coins we have. I'm sorry, with one pence, it doesn't matter how many coins we have. It's only one pence, so we can only make set change with the one pence coin. For two pence, we can only make change. We can make change if our biggest coin is one pence. We can use that to make change only one way. In fact, if our biggest coin is one pence, we can only use that to make change one way, no matter what. Make sense? So this is the table that we're building. Now let's go ahead and we're going to try to make change for two pence with our largest coin being the two pence. 
And so we have two ways of doing it, using the two pence and not using the two pence. Not using the two pence is gonna be, give us this. And using the two pence is gonna give us this. In other words, it's gonna give us uh, our biggest coin, trying to make change for zero make, using our biggest coin. It's just one way because we use that coin. And then also the way to make change without using our biggest coin. Make sense so far? Let's look at, um, at, at again, at our example of five, right? If we're trying to change, make change for five pence and our biggest coin is five, well, we can use it, right? We can use it. Um, and using it, we know if we use our five coin, that's only, there's only one way that that's going to end, which is with us at zero, with uh, us at trying to make change for zero pence, there's only one way to do that. So one. And then not using it. Well, not using it, it sorry, not using it. We know there's three ways to solve that problem. There's three ways to, to make change for uh, five pence using only the uh, one coin and a two coin. Make sense? There's only three ways to do it. Now, what these arrows are showing is showing to make change. The way we make is, is how these answers are, you, are able to, can be used in relation to each other. Because right now we're just kind of going through this graph, through this algorithm over here which we wrote over here, all kind of willy-nilly. We're just putting in stuff in a, basically from our top-down approach, we're caching everything, right? As need be. Make sense? Make sense? We're just caching everything. Okay. So if we're just caching everything, what can we do? Well, we can think about what is the relationship, is, the, is there a relationship between these caches? Um, and we see here, right? Again, the way to make change for, for six pence, sorry, let's go ahead and say, here's we've got one, two, five, 10. The way to cha make change for six pence with our largest coin being 10 pence, well, we can't use it. So it's the number of ways using it, which we can't, and the number of ways without using it, which is apparently there's five ways. And we calculated there's five ways to make ch change for six, by, by looking up how many times it took to uh, without using it to make change for six coins without using uh, the five piece and the amount of ways to make change for it if we do, do use the five piece, right? There's only one way we can make change for six pence if we don't, if we use the five piece. Make sense? There's only one way, which is the five coin and the one coin adds up to six. Am I making sense to everybody? I know it's a bit hard to, to grasp. But you I got see, it, I got it. sorry, I got it. I mean, right? We're using it to to this. So we have a formula that we can use to calculate these things. Now, dynamic. So now, whereas recursive, where, where this this recursive memoization went upwards. Okay, built it from. Oh, sorry, built not not upwards. It started from the top and built it down. Right, started at the beginning and going down. We're going to dynamic programming has some advantage has a big advantage, which is that we're going to start from the bottom up. And by defining everything in relation to these sub problems and solving these sub problems, we don't have to hit these expensive recursion calls. We do have a, a bunch of expensive recursion calls, and I've been very inefficient in the way this works. Right, I'm making copies of arrays left and right. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm making copies of array left and right. I'm tossing in. Uh, rows and columns that I don't need make sense. Just some, so it's easier for me to co uh, code. So let's go ahead and do def. We're going to try to make change for n coins. Sorry, for a target using these coins. Okay. And what we need to do for this is, is that we are going to build this table row by row. 
We're going to build this table row by row. Okay, so, so how, how is this going to be built? Okay, so let's actually physically build it on the whiteboard for a second, okay? Okay, come on, why does that pop up there? Okay, so let's look at this. We have um, one, so we have, we're trying to make change for zero coins, one coins, two coins, three coins, four, five, dot, 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 as many as, you know, our, whatever our target is, it doesn't matter. Okay, then over here, right, we'll try to make change, basically our biggest coin, one, our one coin, our two coin, our five coin, and it continues on, right, dot, dot, dot. So first off, we'll initialize this array, like so. There's only one way to make change for, for nothing. It doesn't matter what the biggest coin is. Furthermore, we'll go ahead and say that we've got, you know, there's only one way to make change. So how many ways are there to make change for one coin? Well, um, we use the one coin and we're done, essentially. So that's it. Okay. Now, how does this, so again, we'll initialize this because we only have one way to use this. Make sense? We don't really need to initialize it, but that's what it's gonna come down to. I won't initialize it. So let's go ahead and target making change for two coins. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to say that the way to make change for two using the largest co coin we have available, which is one, is equal to the amount of ways using it and the amount of ways without using it. Now, without using it, it's not going to give us anything. The way he's using it is going to be equal to, well, if I use one coin, that brings me down to one. So there's only one, and there's only one way to make change for one. So there's one way. Now, if there's, if I have the two access to the two coin, there's, I can, you, I can make change over here. And I can consider what's going to happen if I don't use it. Make sense? So it becomes one plus one. Is equal to two. Make sense? Okay. And now what we're going to do is that how many change, ways are there to make change for the three coin? Well, it's not big enough, so we can't do that. So we just look at the number of ways to make change for two. For the three coin, again, it's one. How many ways to make change for three? If we use the, if we use the two, how many ways to make change for three? If we use the two coin, and if we don't use the two coin, make sense? So that's also going to be two. There's two ways to make change for that. And now if we have access to the five coin, again, just two ways. So again, what we're going to, again, this table builds up like so. which is that it is if we if we have only one coin or nothing to make there's only one way if we have only the one piece or zero cents there's only one way that uh, that result that there was what was to make change otherwise the number of ways to make change is equal to the number of ways to make change with all the smaller coins or it it's the number of ways to make change with all the smaller coins plus the 
uh, all the coins that we that we used previously. Sorry, I'm sorry, not that. All the coins that, sorry. So on all the number of ways to make a uh, change using only the smaller coins, in other words, going one uh, one column to the left, uh, one column to the left, plus all the ways to make change by going up a certain number of rows by subtracting the value of the coin. Make sense? So what we can do here is that we can make our coin are basically a something like this. We have a table it's equal to in right for I in range to target plus one. Um, actually, what we're going to do over here is just going to go for target. The first thing we're going to do is one times length of coins. Why are we doing that? Because this is going to represent the number of ways to make change if we're at zero. Then we're going to append a bunch of zeros. Um, table dot append. Table dot append zero times the number of coins we have. Make sense? And now what we do is we say for um, row in table or, or target in row, which is because each row is a certain target, right? For And what we'll do is we'll go and just simply iterate on, we'll start from the first row. Sorry, from row index one, because we've already completed this one. For, um, let's see. For coin index in, in, that's not target, that's four. Yeah, we should. in target row, what we're going to do is we're going to ask, hey, if three statements, we're going to say, hey, if, um, let's see, let me refresh my, let me refresh that. It says, hey, if your coin is equal to one or your, or your table is equal to zero, if, so if, coin is equal to one. In other words, if coin index if coins coin index if we're currently on the ones then table hmm Annoying. Okay. Let's go ahead and we need to get, I got to do this, enumerate. So what's going on is I'm doing a for each loop and I need the index. Actually, no, I don't need the index because I'm going through it. Except I'm not, I'm going over a copy of that table. Ah. If coins is equal to, or, sorry, or enumerate table, that gives me index If coins coin index is equal to one,
Yeah, what am I doing? This is much easier. Sorry. Or row in range. I'm just so used to doing it in Python in in Python's way that I completely just had a, a silliness there. But it's much easier to do it this way for for range and length of row. Plus one or call in range zero length of table row if coins of call is equal to one. Rather, we can just simply say if yeah, if call if we're in our first row, column is equal to one. Table, row, table, row, call equals one. Okay. Finally, on the move. If table. Oh, and if you're wondering what's an, what what um, why I'm going a bit slow here because this is like the unoptimal way to do it. There's even an optimal way to do this with dynamic programming. I'm building an entire table, which it will turn out we do not need, but it gets the point across. And it makes it easy to count how many operations we need to do for this, the big O of this. So otherwise, if table, so let's see, if the coin is greater than one, if, If coin call, which is another way of checking that, is greater than one, and and the total in our total is less than the number of coins. So, in other words, if our row is less than this value. then that will be equal to table row column row call minus one. So what's going on there? We're saying it basically if we're at if the current we're trying to get right, if what we're if the total amount of coins we're trying to get right now is less than the coin we can use, that there are is less than our biggest coin, we can't use our biggest coin. So the then we should look at the answer we filled in for um it over and that is one one space over to the left. Else, let's see, and T is greater than two. So yeah, this should be this should probably this should be fine as an else clause. Otherwise, if it's not smaller, it's bigger or equal to, which means that table row column is equal to the the number of ways to make change without using it, plus the number of ways to make change while using it. And the number of ways to make change while using it, it would be row minus coins column. That gets us to, to, to um, so we used, so what does this do? This gives, this looks at a higher up row which has a lesser value, right? And still using the biggest coins, but this subtracts out the biggest uh, value for that. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah, I should probably actually return something. Um, 
turn table. Um, table is equal to change target coins. And now what do we do? And then I'm going to go ahead and print table. I'm going to print the last row. And I'm going to print the final answer, negative one, negative one. So, okay. You're not access row. Where is that for line 28? For row in table, oh. Yeah, I, I did a dumb call there. Um, that should be table. Okay, of table row. Int has no length. Right. Okay. Table. Column in range. Right, because. Wait, what? What are you saying? Int object does not support item assignment. All right, hold on. I'm wildly confused here. So let's see. We've got an array. Oh, oh, I see what I did here. Okay, so now we can go ahead and see length of Okay, so for row and then for zero through the number of length of the table row. Okay, so why is that an out of bounds index over here? Column in index is out of range. Um, let's see. I suppose it might be. Um, Print negative one, negative one. Oh. Okay. Okay, we've compounded too much again. How did that happen? Okay. Four row in table. That's probably just an issue with my loop. And I'm being and I'm being dumb with the way I'm doing things. Print row. Okay. That compounded quickly. Is that our answer? Seven, six. Did I? Hold on a second. Four range. Okay. Append. Okay. So if length of coins is equal to zero. One second. I think I made a. Reading error. No, it did not make a reading error. Okay, if column is equal to zero or row is equal to zero, doubt that's going to change anything, but yep, that built up very quickly. Let's go ahead and do zero over here. 
and then the number of ways to make change for enumerate, just to make sure that I'm not being silly here. The other way around. Oh, okay. Oh. Duh. If you're wondering where the issue is here, take a look. I never changed it back from a thousand. So yeah, there's our answer. I believe. Go ahead. Answer should be 7.30. So again, scroll. Print ways, target. So if you were wondering what the night error was, it was uh, an input error on my part. And we can see that we get the same, we should be getting the same, but I bet, yep, we get the same answer as we do it with the recursive method. See that? That was, so the issue I had was not, was not in here. It was that target was still a thousand when I was testing it as opposed to 200, which is like, why is this answer too big? Okay, so the last optimization, which I'm not going to program out, and I'm just going to show you because of time, okay, is we can note that since every call looks either to the left or up, in other words, it looks at a previous uh, result, we can essentially use, um, we can just simply use a single column. So here, what we do is that we say the make, way to make change is for, we just simply note, here are the number of ways to make change for zero coins, one coin, two coin, three coin. The ways to make change for zero, for zero pence is one, right? Then for every denomination, right? Then for every single one of the denominations from smaller to bigger, what we do is that we go through this array and we add, and, and what we're doing is that we're kind of, is that we've kind of taken this and we are going through the, the, we're filling out one row at a time, essentially. We're figuring out, okay, for this denomination, we have, so, sorry, what we're doing here is actually, we're kind of flipping this, okay? So now instead of a, um, so let me, whereas like here with the table, we had it as, um, you know, here's the number of ones, here's the number of twos, here's the number of fives, here's the number of ways to make change with 10. Instead, we, we are going, our row is number of ways to make change with zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's just, it's rotated. But what we do is we say for each denomination, what we do is we calculate the number of ways to make change using that denomination. And then we just increase the denomination because every answer relies on a previously calculated answer, which saves us a lot of, to uh, a lot of space, although not a lot of time. Speaking of time, how much did this take? Very common cost for this kind of problem where we've got is O of n, sorry, o of, and let's put in this target times coins. In other words, I took two, I had two arrays, right? So I had, I had problem of size n, I have input one, which is the target size, and then I have the number of coins. So my table is going to be this big, and this is the number of things I have to fill out. So it's this many operations. Make sense? So how about the space complexity? Exactly the same. Great. Yeah. Exactly the same. Although we can get away with space if we're clever about it and can and and don't have to like rely on other 
pieces, we can just simply, sorry, if we're clever about it for some problems like this one, we can just make the space complexity O of the target. So dynamic, well, so what, so what does that come down to? Dynamic programming is taking a look at sub problems, okay? And figuring out how many ways there are to, and basically seeing, okay, can I use the sub problems in a convenient way to build things up from one answer to another, uh, you know, can I, if I see this repeated work, can I use the sub problems? And more, and just as importantly, are the solutions to sub problems optimal solutions to, for future sub problems? In other words, are, are the solutions I'm creating useful? Okay. So the other, cl the classic dynamic programming problem is the knapsack problem, okay? Which you probably heard of, right? You all heard of the knapsack problem or no? No. No. Okay. Excellent. 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 So there's two very, we're going to go over two variations of the knapsack problem right now. And I'll introduce them to you. Sir, actually, shall we have a break? Um, we've only got like 20 minutes left, but sure. And then I will briefly introduce this for next lecture. So hopefully, though, that explained uh, a bit better the dynamic programming. So from now on, we're going to just, when we're solving problems, we're not going to really look at the recursive method for it. We're going to look at the dynamic programming way of solving it. Okay, so five minutes. All right, is everybody still there? For some reason, I'm not seeing my camp, my, for some reason, my, oh, there it is. Cool. I'm gonna go over the knapsack problem fairly quickly. Now I like the knapsack problem because it is a very, um, it's a very, it, you can present it in a very interesting way. Um, it does not have a polynomial time solution, um, or probably doesn't. We haven't been able to find one. Uh, and the solution for it, but it has a pseudo polynomial solution, meaning its runtime is about, is O of, the knapsack problem's runtime is O of n to the w, what in the world are those? We'll see in a bit. So the idea here for knapsack problem is as follows. Um, you're a burglar and you're doing burgling, okay? In other words, you, you want to rob a place, okay? And you break into the vault or to the art gallery or whatever. It doesn't really matter. You're a burglar. You're not very selective so long as, the, as there is loot, right? And now you've only got so much time before before the alarm trick you know triggers the cops and they come going the, the, sorry and they come after you. So you definitely want to you know grab the stuff and run. But here's the thing: stuff weighs certain amounts, right? Uh, you know those gold bars are certainly attractive, but they are heavy. But diamonds, cheap, easy to move. Sorry, they are expensive and easy to move. So the knapsack problem says you are this burglar and you have this knapsack. Uh, you want to gain, uh, take, you want to figure out what is the optimal configuration of loot you can take away, assuming that your knapsack can hold a certain, uh, a certain weight and that you have, so suppose we have N different types of items, items, each with a weight of, sorry, each with a value and a weight. Okay, um, in this and in this formulation of the, this problem, this makes sense. Everything costs a certain amount of money, and everything weighs a certain amount, right? 
and then your knapsack is the max weight slash size or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so the maximum, that is basically your, your, your uh, hard maximum of what you can carry. And the goal is, um, is to maximize the, uh, the loot's value. Right? Makes sense to everybody? So we might see, so your inputs might be like, we have a total of W, our total weight is equal to 10. The diamond is equal to one. Goal, sorry, cost one. Let's see, let's do value first. So it costs 10, sorry, it gives you, it gives you 10, gives you one. Gold bar might be equal to 100, but or sorry, it might be equal to 12, but you can only grab 10 of it. It's basically a trap. Let's go ahead and actually cash is equal to, um, you know, five, and that takes up two spaces, basically. And you want to... And, and in this configuration, right, you're kind of looking at the diamonds and it's the, the answer is to grab all the diamonds all the time, right? Grab all the diamonds. So let's go ahead and change this uh, configuration right a bit so that we got a bit of a more of a thing. So here the optimal solution is to grab... Um, and this is assuming you can grab this as many times as you want. Okay, so we're looking at the um, so we're looking at variation of this first problem, which is called. So we're looking at the first variation of the knapsack problem, which is knapsack with repetition, which is basically we have unlimited. Is that basically you're in a vault, and each of these items exists in the vault, right? And there's lots of each of these items, right? So here in this case, we should take three wads of cash to get us up to nine, and then we'd want to take one diamond to get us up, sorry, three wads of cash to get us up to nine weight, 15 points, take one diamond to get us up to to top us off to 16, right? Doesn't make sense to not take the diamond. We'd be literally leaving money on the floor. Makes sense? So. The issue is that like being greedy doesn't necessarily work here because right if we try to go 10 if we try to do the um you know wait 10 okay select the smallest item right we'll constantly select diamond and that's going to give us the most um or we'll constantly select uh gold a ratio might not actually work either we might get, be able to get an approximation though if we if we do a ratio um but the idea here is for this algorithm is that we say, okay, we have a, and this time for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use a dictionary, def knapsack. And we take in, we have um, a set of n items. We have our n items, which are, which we can define as a class later or whatnot. And then we have our weights. And then we have our total, our target weight. So let's go with and with our uh, value. Let's go and say and say our values are in a list and our weights are in a list. And we're trying to hit our target. Okay. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, um, best is equal to a dictionary. And we are going to say best of zero is zero, obviously. And the reason I'm doing it this way is so I don't have to, well, is mainly so I don't have to append a value, but because I'm being lazy. But what we'll say is for 
w so for our for w up to um and including that's for in range in this range right we're going to figure we are going to go ahead and figure out okay the Oh, and let's make, um, yep. So we're going to say, and now here I'm going to abstract a bit because there's only seven minutes left, but basically we can say that K, so the best thing to get for that weight is equal to the max of, of, And, I, and there's a way to do this in Python. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, where I can say the max, where it's going to be equal to the maximum of. Sir, in line twenty one, do you mean weight plus one instead of capital W? Oh no, um, target plus one. Okay. Sorry, I was translating from the textbook. Max of W minus um, weights I for all. less than um so what we're saying here is uh figure out of uh, our best is grab the most valuable item so basically take the most valuable item and so basically uh sorry no take the max value the maximum of what will give you selecting an item with the previous, all the previous selections that you've made. So again, here diamond would be one. Diamond, uh, taking two diamonds would be, sorry, the best of two would be taking two diamonds. The best of three would be taking cat, would be taking a, a giant thing of cash, which would give you five, because that's bigger than choosing another diamond and adding one to your total score. Okay, there's a there's a concise, I'm sure there's a concise way to do that in Python, which we'll go over in our next lecture. But again, we have four minutes left, so I wanted to introduce what's the other one, okay? Which changes things. So again, we're gonna be revisiting this problem because it is one of the most famous recursive uh, problems. If there's knapsack with repetition, then it stands to reason that we have a knapsack without repetition. And basically what that means is that each item is only can, can only be chose, chosen once. And that has a, a very similar solution to our coin sum problem, which is that for a given weight, we want to the best we the best move is to calculate what the optimal which is more optimal taking the item versus not taking the item at a given weight. Make sense? And calculate that for all items. And that's an interesting problem. The knapsack problems is fair is is a fairly uh, interesting problem. And again, it is it is pseudo-polynomial, as we called it, because we've got O of n times W time. So those values can get very big. Um, and again, these can be solved using memoization as well. 
Here, again, I'm building up from the bottom, which is that we build up from the bottom. And for the knapsack with repetition, we just need one row. What's the best item to choose right now? For a knapsack without repetition, we need to, we need, we need actually two rows. So we need, um, we need rows and columns to indicate the effect of choosing an item versus choosing an item, because we can only take one copy of an item. That's why it's called one zero. Either you take one of an item or you take zero of an item. In that case, with our with these with this input, it's very obvious the gold wins if you can only take one copy of each, because that is worth twelve, whereas taking the diamond and the cash only gives you six. Make sense? Ugh. 